Creating motion graphics the traditional way means hours in After Effects, setting up layers, keyframes, and endless tweaks. But with Google's release of Nano Banana, that has completely changed because now you can generate motion graphics like this in just seconds. This is the kind of result that makes you wonder if traditional editing software even makes sense anymore. I've been testing different workflows with it, and while it's insanely powerful, there are some techniques that you need to know to get the best possible results, because without them, your results will just look off and unnatural. So in this video, I'll walk you through exactly how to create motion graphics step-by-step -step using Nano Banana, and then how to bring them to life. Now, if you want to follow along with this tutorial, I've linked OpenArt down in the description. This is the tool I'll be using for all the motion graphics you'll see in this video. To access Nano Banana through OpenArt, start by going into the image section. Once you're there, you'll see the full image workflow open up. Next, click this button right here and switch the model from the default setting over to Google's Nano Banana. So for our first motion graphic, what I am going to create is a three-dimensional hourglass that spins slowly to showcase the passage of time, something that works really well for an educational style video. I found an image of an hourglass online, and I'm going to start by importing this into the image guidance section inside the tool. As you can see here, I just upload my image, and now I want to adjust it with a prompt. The first thing I'll type into the prompt is to make the background a solid green color. Once I've done that, I also choose the number of images to generate. I always recommend going with more than one, because sometimes nano Banana makes little mistakes, and if you only generate one, you might end up with something that doesn't look right. By generating a couple of versions, you increase your chances of having at least one that is clean and ready to use. Once that's finished, as you can see, we now have two images with a solid green background. Now, one more thing worth noting is that it doesn't have a watermark like the one you usually get when using Nano Banana, which is another reason why I use OpenArt. The reason this is important is because it allows you to remove the background entirely and have the hourglass as an isolated object that can be dropped into any video you want without any edges. From here, I download this first version and now I'll move to the next step. In the new prompt, I write that I want all the sand in the hourglass to be placed at the very top section. I generate again, and now I receive two images where the sand is collected entirely at the top. Next, I want to create the opposite version, so I type another prompt asking for all the sand to be placed at the bottom section instead. After generating again, I now have two images that show the hourglass with all the sand settled at the bottom. These two images are very important because they will act as the starting and ending frames of our animation. Now that I have those, I move into the video section of the tool, which you can find on the left-hand side. This step is critical because in order to animate something smoothly, you need to use a model that allows you to set both a start and an end frame. Some of the best models for this are Kling, Hilo, and Seadance. For this example, I'm going to go with Kling. I upload my first image, the one where the sand is completely in the top section, as the start frame. Then for the end frame, I upload the image where all the sand has dropped to the bottom. For the prompt, I write that I want a smooth animation of an hourglass with golden sand inside, where the sand flows naturally from the top section into the bottom section, gradually filling it up as time passes. At the same time, I want the hourglass itself to slowly rotate in a smooth spinning motion, almost as if it's gently turning around its vertical axis. I leave the duration and the quality settings as they are and click generate. After a short wait, I can already see that the motion graphic looks really good. The sand flows realistically, the rotation is smooth, and the overall quality is high enough that it feels like a finished product. Now for anyone who needs this to be even higher quality, especially if you're working on a professional motion graphic project, there is a way to enhance it further. All you need to do is click on the video upscale option. In the resolution settings, you can select the highest one, which is 4K, and you can also increase the frame rate to 120 FPS. Once you click enhance video, the tool will render a new version of your hourglass animation in much sharper detail, with smoother motion, making it perfectly suited for high-end video production. Now, smooth animations are great, but let's make something that really stands out, a full neon sign animation. For this, I found an image of a neon sign online that I will be using as the base. Just like before, I upload the image into the workspace in the image creation section. For the prompt, I simply write that I want to change the top text to subscribe to and the big bottom text to Yuri. After clicking create, I get back two new images that look extremely good both styled in the same neon design as the original image. The next step is to prepare the off section of the sign so that we can animate the effect of the neon lights powering on. To do this, I re-upload the finished image with the updated text and write a new prompt that says, this is a neon sign, create an image with it being off. After generating, the result shows the sign turned off 
and it looks very realistic. You can still see the glossy tubing and the glass-like structure of the neon lights. But there is no glow, which makes it perfect for the animation effect. For this specific video, I decided to use the Seedance model to show you some differences between models. So I set my start frame as the off neon sign image and my end frame as the lit version of the neon sign. Now I'll just paste my prompt. This is a longer prompt and I generated it with ChatGPT because I wanted to make sure the AI understood exactly what I was aiming for. After clicking create, the animation came out looking very impressive. The neon text flickers, sparks, and gradually stabilizes into a glowing, steady sign, which creates a very authentic and visually striking effect. Now, if you wanna use this neon animation in a video without a dark background, for example, if you're going to overlay it onto another scene, you can absolutely do that. All you would need to do is at the beginning of the image creation process, instead of keeping the black background, ask the tool to render the sign on a solid green background. That way, you can key it out later and have the neon sign appear seamlessly in any video without the background showing. Now text is one thing, but what if you wanna create a full 2D animation? Well, that's what we'll do next. To start, I took an image of myself, which will be my first reference photo. And for the second reference, I chose an image I found online of some characters designed in that same illustrated style. Once both references are uploaded, I write the prompt, convert the man from the first reference photo into a clean 2D illustrated avatar in the same style as the characters in the second reference image. Use flat shading, smooth outlines, and simple colors. Keep his hairstyle, facial structure, and clothing recognizable, but stylized to match the illustrated style. Make the background simplified and flat, using soft color blocks without realistic details. As you can see, the result looks very good. The character version of me comes out clean and nicely stylized. Now that I have both the character and the background set up, the next step is to create some movement. So I'll upload the final image of myself. For the prompt, I write this. Create a 2D illustrated version of the same man from the starting frame in the same flat vector style and background. Keep his face, hair, and clothing consistent. Make him raise his right hand in a friendly wave toward the camera with a small natural smile. Keep the body posture mostly the same, just adding the waving gesture so it looks like a smooth continuation from the sitting pose. With those two images saved, I move into the video creation section to actually animate the transition. I select Kling as the model and I upload both frames, the first image where I'm just sitting in a neutral position and the second where I'm smiling and waving. Then I write this prompt, animate a smooth transition between the two reference frames. Start with the man sitting in a neutral expression, then animate him naturally raising his right hand to wave while gradually smiling. The wave should feel friendly and casual with a small movement of the wrist and arm. After the wave, let him return to a relaxed sitting position with the smile still present. Keep the 2D illustrated vector style consistent throughout and maintain the same flat colored background. The motion should be fluid and realistic, like a short hand wave gesture. I leave all the other settings as they are and click create. Once it finishes, the animation looks really good. It doesn't look overly smooth or too realistic. Instead, it has that cool 2D animated feel. And what's powerful about this process is how flexible it is. You could easily expand it to make characters walk, talk, or interact with objects, or you could design more advanced sequences for storytelling or client projects. The possibilities are huge, and this shows just how incredible AI can be when it comes to building professional quality motion graphics in a fraction of the time it would normally take. Now the next one will change the way you make chart motion graphics forever because I will show you how you can very simply turn a boring chart into a cool motion graphic. The first thing I'm going to do is import an image I found of a sales chart online. For the prompt, I write this. Make this into a minimalistic yet futuristic design with clean shapes, smooth flat style, and cool popping colors that look modern and high tech. As you can see, the image I get back looks very cool. The design feels modern and futuristic, but it still kept the name of the chart at the top. That's something I don't want, but it's very easy to fix using the editing tool inside OpenArt. I just select the text I want removed and the AI completely replaces it so that it looks invisible as if it was never there. Now for the animation, I wanted to expand outwards as if the sections are revealing themselves one by one. So for the next step, I import the finished chart image and write this prompt. Take the same pie chart, but only keep one fourth of the chart part visible with the color and detail. Make the other three fourths completely blanked out. I click create and the new image comes back exactly how I wanted it. A pie chart with just a single slice showing while the rest is hidden. Now I take both images, the full chart and the single slice version and move into the video section. I select Kling as the model, upload the first frame with only one slice visible and upload the second frame with the full chart revealed. 
Then for the prompt, I write this. Animate the pie chart starting with only one slice visible while the rest is blacked out. Gradually expand and reveal the other slices until the full colorful pie chart is complete. The motion should feel smooth and natural as if the chart is opening up or unfolding into the full version. I click create and as you can see, the result looks amazing. The chart expands naturally, the slices reveal themselves in a very smooth way, and it even feels like the percentages are popping onto the screen. And just like before, if you want to overlay this chart on top of another video, you can simply ask the AI during the image creation step to put it on a solid green background. That way, you can easily key out the green later in your editing software and drop the animated chart seamlessly into your video. So now you've seen how easy it is to create motion graphics that would take weeks to make in After Effects with Nano Banana and bring them to life directly inside OpenArt. And the best part is, with OpenArt, it's all easy, it's all simple, and it's all in one place. You don't need expensive software, weeks of animation experience, or a big production team. OpenArt gives you the power to create these kinds of motion graphics in minutes. So if you're ready to start creating stunning animations for your own videos, just click the link down in the description and start using OpenArt today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.